The Great Giza Pyramid Complex is a very unique the setup structure or system. I'm going to go over a couple of the features or factoids. The uh, level of the first level there in the third largest structure is the same as the bottom of the pit in the King's Chamber that is below the floor level that they've capped off with a piece of metal so you don't even know it's there today. The tail that comes in from the end, the bottom edge of it is at the water level of the system and the top of it is about where the boss mark is, um, like, like the top edge of that arc thing, uh, which actually is outside the king's chamber out here. So that gives you the elevations involved in the structure there. The lower edge here, that seems to be the um, about halfway up the, the elevation of the Queen's Chamber there. The arc room. This actually comes down in pairs. Let's move the edge of the pyramid out so I have some room to work with here. Ooh. See what magic lets us do? And we got our down shaft. What we're going to have down here is the elements on the inside of here. This shorts down to the, the depth, if I had done this correctly, the depth below the, uh, the arc chamber queens the, in the back of the niche, the one that they've currently filled in. But that would be the depth of that. The water elevation that's maintained throughout the system. It's actually going to be three different pools, but they are all connected together right outside the system on the east side where you have the flow control valves that maintain all the levels of the pressures of the water. And the ultimate pressure, the, the relief, is in the third structure over where you've got that room that you can go in there with Google and see the, the maintain the flow of that. That's all at the same elevation, which is the same elevation, if I had done it correctly. It's actually slightly below ground level. So in the grotto, um, the area where they have the double bubble chamber, that is what maintains the, um, the water elevation in that room. And then this comes down. We've got a tight tolerance down here. Of course, this is kind of shifted to the center, but I need room to draw. Tight tolerance down here, where you've got that kickback for the bubble to go up. You must have this as level as possible, a little tooth in there. And then in here, they did it over an area of 20 feet, only deviated about half an inch, and has a stucco type roof with a shape on it that will push one a lighter gas around while the other gas flows out um, telling us that they actually had both gases in play down here and they really wanted to keep the hydrogen in the roof in here is set up so that there's two pincers so that when the pressure comes in the gases are pushed in opposite directions on either side this hydrogen sourcing from this side and the oxygen sourcing from that side. So you have kind of be an oxygen-hydrogen mix and then it's quarantined out. You have a relief of hydrogen that's coming off here at a rate at least that's good enough that it stained the wall over the time period of the function and use. And that's some gas that comes in. They're trying to keep all the hydrogen they can. You got a shaft down here that is ribbed, which will allow that when this bubble comes out, you're going to have a little shock wave come through here, and we're going to do some work. I don't know what work we're going to do there, but we're going to do some work. The origin of all this is going to be coming from the anode of the system right there, the oxygen. And we'll make that part work. The hydrogen here is going to come out. I already told you how it's got, a, got its like pressure bubbles here. And that hydrogen is going to be pumped up to the top of the system. Now here we got the other pressure bubble across the back of 
this would be across the uh, west wall where we're going to have a system that will allow that hydrogen to come in and bubble through and then bubble out. And it's, it's all gonna be at a tight tolerance so the hydrogen kind of just has to bubble. Not, not give a lot of pressure at all, but the water level will be maintained so the hydrogen can easily come through. And the chamber actually comes to a, I don't know why, the, to a lower depth. Maybe hydrogen has its pressure where it has to be equal or something. Not 100% sure but this will make the pressure of the hydrogen coming up when it fills there to be able to bubble through into that system through a pool of water, which will be our flashback arrestor, into the system, into the king's chamber, the arc chamber. Actually, combustion room. This is the arc chamber. Now, once in that combustion room, how are we going to get combustion? Well, in one of the walls, the whole room is symmetry, but in one of the walls, we're going to make this little obstacle there that recesses about five to seven inches in and comes out to a point. And that point is actually going to protrude outside the wall a little bit. And that is going to allow an anomaly in the room which will allow a spark. And right there is where we're also going to put the inlet for the air. Normal everyday air. 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen and CO2, well, you get a little bit of it there, so Al Gore will be happy. It's all going to be combusted in here, and primarily we're going to wind up getting some water. That water is going to go out that one shaft that does not exit the structure, it's going to condensate and start coming down into the system. The way the center gallery is made, we're going to get a lot of condensation in there. To play with this, this particular inlet if we stare into it, let me do it horizontally instead of on an angle here. If we stare into it, the water level is going to be maintained. So as the water level comes up, it chokes it off. And as the water level goes down, it lets more air into the system. On the exact opposite side of the room, at a water level so that it is saturated, is where the waters, one of the ways the waters are going to go out. It's going to be like the relief valve. That's what's going to push the steam and stuff up this one conduit where it's going to condensate and come back. Now, it's going to come down through a mostly ignored area, which I like to call the thieves tunnel. Inside the thieves tunnel is a conduit that connects to that up conduit. That conduit is nice and squared and is also channeled across the top of the, the thieves tunnel. You also notice in the Thieves Tunnel is a pooled area and a break in the wall which is in line with in, in line with the uh, where the shaft starts because the shaft as it goes through the wall kind of bends uh, to divert from the Grand Gallery. Now, what else do we got? Uh, oh yeah, that particular shaft that comes across we got the water level with the inlet, the one conduit, and the one that's in the thieves tunnel is at a higher elevation. Now, the water's going to pool into the thieves tunnel, go down, and run down the grand gallery, which will run down here. Now, it won't pool unless we were to put uh, something, a wall back in, right before the rock that is currently holding the boss mark. And that will allow the water to pool in that section, allowing the, the system to control itself and maintain itself. Precipitation will come down into the system. And down here we've got some nice play because I told you the water level is about halfway the, the height of the queen's chamber, the arc chamber. In order to keep the system from flooding that high, when the water comes into the system, it is maintained by going through a double bubble system. And what that's going to do is maintain the, the rate of the water and it's actually going to have a specific pressure to it. Because if you notice there's an air relief valve or gas relief valve that comes from the side. And you have a spillway, when you look at the back of it, that comes in at that same elevation. That will allow 
to be to, to maintain the flow of that particular uh, setup. When there's pressure goes down, water comes in. Pressure goes up, water is kind of maintained because of the double bubble system. The air is constantly, or oxygen is going to constantly be coming out, and water may or may not be constantly going in. Um, you're always going to have gases coming out uh, because the system is just going to keep going. The water is going to be, as the gases are coming up, going to be pulled up into the system, allowing every now and then some water to have to be brought in unless the gas just keeps building up the pressure. Not, not sure if that lock system will be nice enough that the air pressure or the oxygen pressure works its way all the way down to where it can't push anymore. Uh, you know, this is where I'd like to set this up and actually let it run. Inside here, we're going to get a lot of condensation. And I believe we're going to get condensation down to the arc there. Now we are allowed to put little rings around there, little Faraday rings, to isolate the upper system from the lower system. And we're already going to have an air gap in there where the air has to fight through. So there is some quarantining of the system and the uh, you know where the static electricity and the uh, electricity in general is going to go. On this side, the water level, the structure is actually going to be not only below water level, it's actually below the water level of the Queen's Chamber, which is at an already fictitious water level. That is where the insides of here are maintained. And this actually goes up to just outside of the water level. So it does not actually, this does not feed from there. There's a tooth down at the bottom of here, which will allow for a gas to pocket. This feeds down to an elevation, which is equal to the grotto. This side has a tooth, which is a little more of a tooth than the other side, which will allow the gas in here to escape out. The gas in here will probably escape out this way, or it maintains, I don't know. Again, we're going to have to put up the system because we're not sure if we're going to get precipitation in here or we're going to get evaporation. I think we may be getting evaporation because if you notice in here, you kind of have a structure set up which has a the lid hanging over it, and it pools a, a liquid and pushes it around and it puts it back into the pool. So I think we're going to get evaporation. It's trying to capture that evaporation. And it wants to capture the evaporation at the lower elevation, but the evaporation at the higher elevation, I think, is allowed to, I don't know. But again, we'll have to set it up and let it run. Let's see what happens. Do you think we're playing with heavy water here, and this is also a trap for the heavy water not to allow it out of the system. Now I'm going to move this a little bit over because I have to draw that part where they call Osiris, Osiris's tunnel. That part that goes down and has the room that comes up and goes down. This again is another trap. And over here we have an inlet which is coming in from the east. It goes up to an elevation which is that equal to the top of the niche. Then comes down into the system. And then we've got a whole structure in there, which is actually this is at a lower elevation than this, but this actually goes down two more levels. So we are playing with liquids in here that have dis different buoyancies and densities. And we have a lot, lots of traps all over the place. In here, the spillway that actually goes down, from what I can tell from everything I've seen, it was initially that you would go down the runway and it would have symmetry with the other side. Except for there's a little, right here there's a little dam right at the end. That would allow for the liquid in this area, which would be running across the floor, to go down into the well. Now, against the back, I guess this is kind of really more like that. Across the back, there is one of those dugouts had a false back, which would go down a little deeper, and then you had an outlet which pooled, I wish I did this in 3D format, 
which would pool into a pool at a lower elevation. That pool fed from right over here on the side so that whatever liquid would hit this elevation, which would be below that other liquid, would condense and come into here, pool here, and then spill over into there. But allowing this liquid to pool here, go into here, come through, spill into there, and pool into here without allowing any of that to come out if this liquid hadn't reached its density, its, its fill level. And or we're working with, I don't know, pressures. And then you still have this, which I believe would be the heaviest of the water to flow out, or the heaviest of the densities of the liquids at play. And that is the way that spill level is. So we're working with multiple densities of some liquids. Um, about all I can think of at this time. If uh, you'd like to ask me any questions or give me any input, I'd be happy to talk more with you. But oh yeah, um, you know, we all know that that is grounded to the the higher elevation up there, and this one's not. Thirty fifth level is a barrier that keeps the static electricity quarantined to the top while this whole system is running. Um, okay.